working for many years now uh, uh, for a company that uh, uh, markets uh, a simulation product for the oil and gas industry. And so our product is uh, completely uh, related to, to simulations. So I want to talk about our experience along the years. And uh, the system is too large to explain the system, but there are some few things that I would like to share with everyone uh, regarding simulations, especially paying attention to, the, to what I mean when I say dynamic simulations. Because there are many things that are related to small talk. And uh, small talk is, is very good for many things, and is especially good for simulations. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, to start with, let's uh, think of some few of the features or elements. But I have to click uh, from time to time. <laughs> okay. Ah, the picture. <laughs> Dynamic picture. Okay. So, let's review some of the features of a simulation. So, for instance, an activity. Think of a simulation as, as something that uh, occurs in uh, a virtual world uh, populated with actors, objects, that perform uh, uh, certain tasks. Let's call a task a job. It's the same, okay? I will call them jobs. So, a job has some uh, characteristics. It starts at a given moment, a point in time, ends at a point in time, has a, a given duration, etc. All of these are and executes or performs some activity. Okay? These are the parameters of, of a job. And you, you can have any kind of jobs and configure in, in many different ways. But jobs, of course, don't uh, come alone they are linked one after the other uh, because of their dependencies. And so, for instance, here we have a link and start when this means that the second job will start when the first one uh, ends. Okay? Another characteristic of a job that is very useful in simulations is uh, to have a boolean or check mark to disable the job in this run, during this run. Because uh, I, that way I don't have to change the structure if I, have to, if I want to introduce or uh, take away some of these activities. So it's a start and duration, uh, the perform boolean. <coughs> also, the links are extremely important because this is the way the modeler will configure the simulation in terms of the timeline trying to say this comes first and then the other so another feature you, you could add is a lag uh, is uh, 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 that um, uh, adds to the link in this case again uh, an end start link some uh, time to defer the execution or the starting of uh, the, the next uh, uh, job. Yeah. If you have a, a job that is dependent on another one just like that, and the first one is disabled, what happens with the dependence? Well, uh, that depends on, on your config, uh, uh, configuration. I will explain that uh, in a minute. So, another feature of a, of a job is once it uh, finishes, uh, it could have been successful or not. This is another uh, characteristic of this object. Uh, so, the result of its uh, performance. So, given the user's many ways to link jobs is very important. So for instance here, so to, to let the user express dependencies uh, as freely as possible. So for instance, another kind of uh, link is the end-end. So the, when the simulation runs, you have to compute back, if, if, if this is the case, where every activity has to start, when, when they start. So for instance, 
if this ends here, you have to compute everything until you can deduce wh when is the start point of this. This is, could be also uh, something that uh, is impossible to resolve because you could create a circular definition. So, so you have to check that. And uh, resolving this is an exercise. It's not that uh, hard. But the hard part comes when these parameters, start, end, duration, etc., are dynamic, meaning unknown at modeling time. They will result or be evaluated later while the simulation runs based on some condition that we can name and refer to, but has not been evaluated yet. So you have to think on this not, not as fixed parameters or quantities or n n uh, numbers, but as variables that will get resolved later while the simulation runs. This is the dynamic aspect of the schedule. OK? So this is back to one question. There are two notions related to finishing uh, or performing a task or a job. Is what is successful or not? Did it complete or just finished? Or was uh, or, or was skipped, skip, skip. Uh, so yes. So for instance, in this case, so you can say uh, uh, job B will start after uh, job A finishes. So even if job A is uh, aborted or doesn't happen, B will start as soon as uh, that happens. In this case. Uh, job C completes, and if the link is to the completion of C, D will start. But in this case, <clears throat> D won't proceed because C didn't complete, just finished. These are the kind of things you have to, to take uh, into account for the scheduling. The scheduling is a big part, a very important part of the simulation. So is the dynamic means, as I said before, that all these parameters could be, some are not, but in some, some of them could be uh, resolved later. So it's a late binding with the actual value. So, so the problem is that uh, the simulation has to constantly uh, look ahead to, to try to deduce uh, when uh, it is the next event will happen and have to evaluate that like all the time, uh, not to skip or be late for an event that already occurred uh, based on what happens with the objects in the virtual world. So here we have like uh, two words. The specification word, which is created by the modeler of the simulation, and here is the virtual world of the objects and actors of the simulation that actually uh, perform all the tasks and jobs. So this is what the modeler defines, and this uh, is what happens in the simulations. This is similar to what happened in Smalltalk. Here are the classes and methods, and here the object and message sends. OK? This is the thing that runs. Uh, so this separation is natural for us. As, as in the case with uh, the objects uh, in Smalltalk, uh, uh, an object knows its class, for instance. So it's good to have uh, from one object here uh, know the definition in, that specifies the object. It's like a meta information for the object. So in general, you have here uh, things that are specs. The specification of, of a job, the specification of a variable, or the specification of some other actor in the simulation. And then you have the real thing that will uh, exist in the virtual world. 
So at the, very, at the beginning, when you start the simulation, <coughs> what happens is that these definitions or specifications populate uh, the virtual world, creating the objects that represent them according to the definitions. But uh, as the simulation proceeds, uh, what also happens is uh, that these uh, things regenerate themselves. So for instance, you can uh, clone objects that uh, came all from the same uh, specification, uh, or you could produce new objects because of the interactions of others, or and objects also here, uh, like get done and disappear or just die, etc. So this is very dynamic. This is where all the, the interesting things are happening. Okay? And here, every object, every job variable, there are many objects, okay, that represent physical things of the physical model you are simulating. Or every of these objects has several characteristics and projects many of those characteristics as variables, okay, which change their value as the simulation runs. And then these values are the ones that you have to use to deduce, for instance, when a job has to start or end, etc., because there might be dependencies on what is going on in the simulation. Is that clear? Okay. There is, uh, because of this, also two uh, notions of time. When you are modeling, your time tends to be ideal. Because ideally, your objects have some uh, capability to do something. Uh, you, you, uh, you know what they are uh, capable of doing. Okay? But here, there, must, there are usually constraints, like uh, uh, scarce uh, resources. The, the, the objects might be competing for resources, like uh, people, money, uh, time, whatever. So uh, what happens is that the virtual time, so the time that happens, that runs in the uh, simulation, is different from the time uh, that you ideally would have if there were no constraints in the system. But a simulation is interesting only if there, is, if there are constraints. Not only, but mainly. So for instance, any curve you have here, you have provided here as a specification, here is, I don't know, some production or whatever, any, any, any curve, that evolves on time, any variable that evolves on time, ideally, is here constrained and reaches some waiting times, some plateaus, that you have to wait for the resource to become available. OK? So uh, even at this level, these things are dynamic. Meaning that if you provide a function with a curve of occurrences of things, these things won't happen as you thought it would because of the constraints. So here we have capabilities and here we have capacities. It's like, that's like the message because of the constraints. So having two notions of, notions of time uh, also uh, creates uh, a lot of, let's call, opportunities uh, to uh, take advant full advantage of the dyna dynamic nature of the system you are uh, supporting. Now, a simulation is as good as the model that the modeler created. So for the, uh, your modelers create interesting models, you have to provide, the system has to provide all sorts of uh, expressiveness uh, features to facilitate the creation of, uh, 
of models, meaning the creations of dependencies, of constraints, of objects that you want to populate, uh, uh, bridge uh, activities, etc., etc. So there are many things y you can do to provide this uh, expressiveness. Uh, so, for instance, one is rules. You have to have a very good uh, uh, model modeling of rules, uh, following the lines of when this condition happens, do this uh, uh, kind of event thing. So what happens is that uh, a good way to take advantage of rules is to allow the user to create rules and then what will happen with these rules is that every actor in the simulated world, in the virtual world, will have a number of rules that the actor has to follow and at every point in time the actor will, give, will, will be given a, a chance to review its rules one by one and to do the actions according to the conditions that met at that moment. Of course, the idea is not to let the user write the rules with a domain specific language. It's more of giving, uh, I don't know, providing uh, graphical uh, features or facilitating the way that users express rules. Like, for instance, how you chain uh, jobs one after the other, that, that, those kind of things. The other thing you have to provide is conditional logic for the users to express uh, dependencies uh, in a way that uh, could, at the same time, uh, be dependent on different uh, things that are dynamically happening while the simulation is running. And this is important because it means that the modeler won't make all decisions before the simulation runs. What the modeler is doing is allowing the objects to make decisions just in time following these directions. <clears throat> and to make these things general, you have to uh, um, model with variables all the parameters that are involved in the conditions or, or the events. So the events and the conditions usually uh, are expressed in terms of things that depends on certain parameters. These parameters could be time, quantities, uh, or, or any kind of uh, um, of variable that uh, could adopt a different value that is not known yet before the, the simulation uh, starts. So, to combine all, all these things, you have to provide uh, a language, a scripting language, to express, let's say, formulas. Okay? When this plus this is greater than whatever, do this, etc. So, you, have to, uh, you need some algebra with these variables to express more things. So the idea here is that if you put uh, a language that is too powerful, it could probably be too difficult for the modeler to learn. And if you restrict too much your language, you, your expressiveness will be limited. So the, uh, our experience showed that a functional language, uh, simplify, very simplified sub, a functional language, very similar to the thing that uh, the kind of expressions that people use in uh, Excel cells for the formulas is, is sufficient and is already familiar to the user. So there is no learning uh, curve to, that challenges that process of expressing these dependencies uh, there. So, so is all this dynamic thing I'm trying to express is uh, again uh, relies on the rules, the conditions, the constraints, the parameters, etc. The configuration, the modeler uh, creates all these things and conf configures 
uh, the, 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 the specifications in a way that uh, is, presents some indirection. Uh, because it's not telling exactly what will happen, but how to behave in case this happens on when this happens. And this is totally deterministic, meaning there is no random here. We also do um, stochastic simulations, right? But that's for another talk. For this talk, think of this as something that is predetermined from the model. There should be any surprise. So why do we need a simulation if we know everything when we build a model? If there was some random behavior, okay, we don't know what the next random will be. But if everything is deterministic, why we need this? Because with very few rules and events and constraints, very, really very few, meaning, I don't know, four or five, not 100, of these elements put together, the, the, the brain cannot predict the consequences of the simulation if you allow the user to express dynamic behavior. So the richness, the unexpected behavior or results don't come from things that are random, come from the dynamic nature of the model. So it's, it's a Poincaré system, essentially. It's a Poincaré system. Yeah, well, yes, yes. It's an image. Exactly. It's another animal. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to think of uh, these simulations that are uh, I don't know, uh, of particles, for instance, where you have thousands of particles as, of course, you cannot predict their behavior. With very few elements, you find yourself shocked by the result because you expected something different. And this is when things become interesting because the computer is telling you something that you originated without realizing the consequences. Well, it happens every day. <laughs> with everything, right? <laughs> Ooh, I'm late. Uh, now, this is deterministic and it's a simulation, so must be, should be a scientific tool for scientific exper experiments. So, must be repeatable, okay? If you run the same simulation twice, you should get twice the same results, right? Well, no problem. This is deterministic. Why should I bother? Well, it's not true. I don't have any T-shirt to, uh, to give, but... I think I give you mine. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> why, why could it happen that everything being fixed and deterministic, I run again the simulation and I get a different result? I will give you a hint. Bug. No, not a bug, not a bug. Our system doesn't have any of those. <laughs> Why <do> you laugh? <laughs> no, no, the hint is this. <laughs> well, Cash collections. That's random behavior. Exactly, but it's hidden random behavior. Sooner or later, you will use a set, a dictionary, any hash collection, and you will iterate on, on those, okay? Well, you have to be very careful because in the next run, the thing, the, the, the enumeration could go in a different order. And with things that are competing, for things that uh, are, are um, uh, scarce, you, you could get uh, the resolution differently just because the enumeration took a different order. So I'm not, you cannot afford not using hash collections, but you have to pay attention to when you use them. And this is not that easy, okay? So, for instance, one thing you could do is to um, order the, uh, the before enumerating things, order the collection by some intrinsic 
uh, characteristics. For instance, the name of the object. You sort by the name. Then, if you change the name of the object, maybe you get a different result. Everything else being the same. Shouldn't you implement uh, the characteristic cache collections that forbid such... No, it's not necessary. Don't be lazy. If you use... If you use equality hashed collections, they should be repeatable. Identity ones should not. Yeah, yeah, but they get in the way somehow. So the basic hash is there. So let me uh, say something about performance. Is is the last slide I have. Uh, so bear with me uh, one minute. So these things, the time here is a, is a super important dimension, right? So. This is uh, the virtual time, the time of the simulation. So the idea is that uh, every certain, num certain lapse, you step again. But wait, not all simulations are uh, discrete. You may, might have, uh, and usually have, we have um, also continuous uh, behavior. So when you step, uh, you update all the, the discrete things but also but integrates the continuous ones from the last step to this one now the thing about performance is that you cannot step every time you have to step there are too many steps and at every step you have to check all the rules update all the variables etc etc this is too expensive it would take too long it's not affordable so the other component here is that while this must be the semantics, okay, this is what people should think is happening, what you have to do is different, is, um, is this. You have to detect periods of inactivity and jump over th those without stepping, stepping in the middle. So, every time you step, one other thing you have to do is try to find the next uh, step be before the next event becomes available. So, you have to somehow, um, in many cases, you cannot predict exactly when, but, but you can uh, assure that if you jump here, no event, you, you won't miss any event or won't be late for any event. So, jumps are extremely important for performing reasons. So, but here you integrate the continuous part, you integrate again as you, you do here. So it's not change for that, it's more a change for the discrete thing and the computation of the jump. Um, so uh, a, a, a period of uh, inactivity, uh, so for instance in our case, the, the, the wells, are sending oil and gas and water on the pipes, so they don't stop. This is the continuous part. But there are things that are discrete, like uh, um, start building something or stop doing that, etc., etc. So what I mean with period of inactivity is a period where there, there is no event, or essentially when the objects I have in my simulated world uh, are the same, remain the same, between steps. No new object is born, no uh, old object is dead. Okay, so here I have four objects, in the next step one new appears, then in the next is the same, and then one goes away. So here, these two steps are not necessary. One will suffice. Okay? Uh, I think that's all. I had an example to show you in the in the actual uh, application, but my time is over, and so that's it. So you will make a jump of a step only if you have an object that is the same as the step that you give you to have. For example, if you have an object Text that has a number, and then you have the same object, some number, and then you change it, you only change, jump to the object that changes. 
Well, I, I, yes. No, but the jumps are not between objects, but between times when the timer ticks and you stop the world, calculate everything, and then wait for the next step. Okay? Yeah. Do you have specific implementation for a single step and the jump? Or no, no. The step knows its duration. And everything is done according to that duration. Yeah. Uh, what happens if you need to... But, but sorry, another dynamic aspect, the duration of, of the step changes. Uh, what happens if you need to do to jumps to integrate a user function? How do you integrate a user No, the user functions, this is the, uh, has to do with the limitations of the, model, of the scripting language. They don't have that. If there is a, a, a function, is built in, so we know everything, we know how to integrate it. Well, you can integrate it. Yeah, yeah. Any composition user can do, you can integrate Yes, yes, because we, we, uh, there are, these are built in functions. Yes. Why do you think uh, Rand does like, uh, non deterministic parties like a problem? Would it be better to adapt to, to make different uh, a number of runs of runs and then get an average? Because if you control the randomness, you can like choose a best, uh, a worst case or, or yeah, sure. No. Uh uh, we do probabilistic uh, simulations. They are extremely important, but this is the base for getting there. You have first to have a deterministic simulation and then run it many times with random uh, values for some of the parameters and then do what you describe. Take averages, all sorts of uh, statistics, etc. That is extremely important, but the trick, that is the easy part. <laughs> Surprisingly, the, the hard part is to have the deterministic right. Something else you can say is that you want uh, probabilistic runs, but you want to control them. Yeah, yeah. You don't want the, that to happen without you know. Yes, because uncertainties, uh, you know something about, some things about your uncertainties. Uncertainties, I know, I know nothing, anything about uh, at all. You, you know something. So, you also want that to be repeatable, right? Yes, and you also want... No, 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 no. Repeatable, completely. But you get that from uh, the deterministic repeatability. Okay, okay let's... let's